We are going to tell you about the giant MacCaskill who was born in Burnery. Rushi er Elan Burnery sublin 1825. Nur vive she o kurshigu stornwe er fe tri bliana. His fa family finally settled in Cape Breton between 1830 and 1835. His adult weight was 425 pounds. His shoulders were 44 inches wide. His hand was a foot was a foot long and eight inches wide, and he he was famous for his strength. He could lift a horse over a four four foot fence. In eighteen forty nine, he went to work for Barnum Circus. Queen Victoria invited him to perform at her castle. At Windsor, she presented him with two gold rings. And said. He was the tallest, stoutest man she has ever seen. This gentle giant died peacefully in his sleep in 1863. <laughs> Dochter voor de rukkige aan de schiappi. Als je vermurig mag koeien, mag posten. Hoeke, hoeke. Als je een train hebt, is het nog gaarlijk als je een nieuwe bij. Je gaat naast de zorg, als je een vuur uit de noemsmoer. A harik yun mori mori bi yun, us kaharik yun yun ha nun sa nau ka ka klechkig ha para konsta klechkisen us merwan isang baatik yun tigu wa doshikan aro faska liti liti dan us yun nuosun an nungje kia kia fikit sa hun us yun ihir sa passengers Att jag gick gungen vid du ah var fördelila bara gungen och så vi tog det stöd så vi känner nu det tog alla gungen gång så vi tar var det konst att kunna känna så vi nu är sen 1996 så vi är här att jag har det sen så vi känner att jag har mycket kul jag kan behålla den jag precis så vi ska ha det nåt kärns Good. 
Kosen ni mi tanto gelan morai, för du är mi mor och du var min anfars, för du bygg mig i ökotjedemola, annan gelan huistenjorna. Sket fatte bon gak mi helan morai, se han i mi wasokos rai. What is kelp, Emma? Kelp is made when the ashes of seaweed are melted and cooled. It contains soda and was used to make glass and soap. I know it came to North East in 1735 from Ireland and it was a very important industry here. By 1814, 5,000 tonnes of kelp were produced here every year in the islands and 8,000 people worked at it. The price for kelp rose to £10 a tonne during the Napoleonic Wars. The work was harsh, cutting and drying and burning the seaweed, watching the pot of boiling lava day and night was terrible. You would think they would be paid high wages for this, but they weren't. The wages were poor. It was the landowners who made huge profits. After the Napoleonic Wars, the price of kelp fell and the landowners forced the poor workers to emigrate. That was the end of that. The factory could have benefited by modernising the machinery. There's a lot of machinery and a lot of processes involved, but the machinery had become sort of old and dilapidated and was often breaking down. So the company then bought over by an American chemical company, a very large American business. So they bought out Algin Industries. The American company is called Merck Industries. But they only had the seaweed factory for a fairly short time and they closed it down. And they found that uh, they could get much cheaper seaweed nearer America by um, harvesting the seaweed in, on the Pacific shore of Chile. Now, if when you look at the atlas, you'll see how long the, the a, a terrific length of seashore on the Atlantic coast of Chile, many thousands of miles long, I'm sure. But um, the seaweed that came ashore there was washed ashore from the Pacific by storms and gales and nobody had to go and harvest it. It came ashore by the grace of God and the elements and it was heaped in the shore and then the huge heaps of this seaweed, very valuable stuff, washed ashore by nature and then it was dried by nature because of the hot sunshine. <laughs> so I got a very much cheaper product and easily collected by machinery. So that's one of the reasons why seaweed industry at Spornish uh, had to stop uh, about 1970. <laughs>
An archaeological dig took place on the Great Otokmacher in 1963 by Ian Crawford. The dig took place over a 24-year period and there had been found that Uta was occupied from the Neolithic times, Bronze Age, Iron Age, Viking Age, Medieval to the 1900s. Uta's terrain is extremely rough. During the dig, Ian discovered a funerary and signs of ritual behaviour. Let's talk about the Vikings. The Vikings invaded Utal in AD 800. They came, from, they came by boat from all over. Did you know that Uta's a peninsula, Zara? Perfect for the Vikings then. Yeah, it would be good because it's close to the sea. What would it be good for? Food and shelter. What did they kill men? They came on long ships with scary heads. Why did they come to Uthal? They came because it is surrounded by water which is easy to reach. Sometimes it was really hard work because you were digging and putting sand into a bucket or whatever you dug into a bucket and you swept it into a little um, shovel into your bucket. Then when your bucket was full you took it to a riddler and you riddled and all the sand out and you picked up what you found on top and that went on to a different tree and sometimes that was heavy work sometimes you used to sit and you brushed all your finds and then you labelled them and they went into a big tea chest and they were sent away to Cambridge University sometimes we found lots of fish bones where there were wild boar um, there were no rabbits um, the one day I was brushing a piece of bone and I thought, I wonder what this is, and it was a part of a skull. Yeah, I remember it very clearly. Um, I've mentioned a few things already to, um, about playing hopscotch on the beach and, um, jumping off the dunes and sort of sliding down onto the beach. Um, we also used to um, do rock pooling, sort of on one side of the beach at Udal. There were sort of plenty of rocks and at low tide we'd go um, looking into the rock pools to see all the, all the animal life. It was like a sort of miniature world. And I remember being very excited one year because the, I found a lobster in one of the rock pools. But... Um, uh, the, the one thing we did, which sticks in my mind, was um, one year there were lots of jellyfish washed up on the beach at Udal, and um, me and my sister, and maybe my brother, we collected the, 
as many jellyfish as we could and made these big sort of piles of jellyfish. Um, and at the time, it didn't sort of, uh, they didn't, I didn't think we'd been stung. We felt okay. But when we got home that evening, all our arms were sort of stinging like mad. And we had to have something like calamine lotion to, to cool us down. But I remember it being very painful and not being able to sleep very well after that. I mentioned about the spoil tips and the, the sieves that they had on the top of the spoil tips. Um, so that was about the only place we were allowed to play uh, as children. Um, but one day when I was on the spoil tips, I, I, I saw something interesting um, poking out of the sand and uh, took it to um, back to the, uh, they called it the small finds tent. They had a tent where all the sort of bits of pottery and things, they collected them and catalogued them. And I showed it to someone, um, and it was a bone comb. So it was a sort of comb for combing your hair, but made out of bone. Um, and uh, so that, when I was little, that was the most exciting thing I found. What did you see at the museum? We saw lots of boats made by Donald Macaulay. Big ones and really small ones made out of nutshells. And Donald talked to us. What what happened to James A. Wright? Well, on the 16th of November, 1877, she was damaged on a reef west of Heisker with ripped sails and torn spa spares. She drifted to Balasher the next day, dragging her anchors. Did anyone die? There were no passengers on board, and the Dutch crew were all safe, but she was a total loss. Her parts were auctioned on the island. Can you still see her? Yes, when the tide is really far out. What What was the weather like for her to sink? Haystacks were blown for miles and small boats landed up on top of crofts. It was a horrendous storm. I can feel the dash for me primly, but as a ski that can hear. I guess they are doing my dad to hook up. I guess he can't be a mad dad as what Anna's a hard one teacher called a shiny one as in the famous view we do. I guess skiing shall go can a mad dad to bomb on the van. I guess um, hear me because on the shore and mad dad to swear that can a bad to have it better to be near than the hill. I guess he for had the high and the turn each in a pair. Ach, Captain, the very bad, she Bowman, Captain Bowman, then I'm a weird. I guess Hanik Luch more, my daughter, or cheer. 
Uh, the main one which is easier to see is the James A. Wright on the Ballasher shore. That's, that was wrecked in 1873 and there's nothing of it left but the ribs and the, the keel, I suppose, buried in the sand. Or, and that is a big wreck and it's very visible when the tide's out. So it's something to go and see. Well, the oldest uh, wreck I know of is probably uh, happened in 1801 or reported in 1801 near Heishkir. That was a boat used for carrying, carrying animals, carrying stock for, to the island from North Uist. And uh, the two men were drowned in that boat, and all who survived was one other of the crew and one cow. And I think I've told you the story about how the the survivor lived for a while with the cow. Vari si verarnikla ichike vilens garev kupi sele hroken mesk ne metal tars ne kulen na sehele yure vos na horo ele uktole hang the inyan rialth kurfon Stalas this via vigare riev hatari hendalek yhukes in lebundate hule lana chenishki yurevos na horu. Kova on an Ian Macotram. She barst a van on the Ian Macotram, barst Irimshach, a ve scrivic barstach, and Jack of Agasanakulin Jiak, a Rukage and a Paskit Hoiker in the news to two. But the ra Karan von a roan a Hanaki Chilmachaka. And you can go to the kitchen and 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 go to the Tatcha Villan Uayaka. Ha, Machotrim, it a healer, and a clug, he lived with 
Pies and the Hoi Kari Fashke, Fedevel Unit Ekanares PB. I guess he you Hlachinecke, he asked a skewn at Nefio Nila, he who was a Yachrok. So we're here today to talk about seals. Uh, the islands behind me on the horizon are called Heishkar, the Monarch Isles, and they've got the second biggest breeding grey seal colony in the world. The only site that's bigger than that is the entire coastline of Canada, which is a slight cheat. So in essence, we've got one of the biggest discrete breeding seal colonies in the world. There's 30,000 grey seals breeding out there, and they produce about 10,000 pups. And the pups are covered in sort of white fur when they're first born, and they take a few weeks to molt, and then the adults leave them and go off to feed, and then later the pups go after the adults. Now this all takes place between October and December, and by sort of early December the adults have all left, and then into January the pups will have left as well. We've got two species of seals around the, the coastline of the US here, uh, as well as the grey seals we've also got common or harbour seals. But actually the harbour seals are rarer, and you tend to find them around the piers and sea lochs and around the coastline, whereas the grey seals are found much further out to sea, although you do see them close to the coast as well. The difference between the two, uh, it's easy to tell, the grey seals have got sort of Roman noses, a bit like a textile sheep, uh, and the common seals and harbour seals look more like a dog, so their face looks more like a dog. I just uh, had decided it's a great place to be. I've seen a lot of the world, I'm not going any further. I'm staying here on North Uist. But when the job finished, I had to feed myself and I started cutting seaweed on the spring tides and selling it back to the factory that had employed me. On the neap tides, I started, well, went fishing. And then people along the Loch Eport Road mainly said, oh, we've got any fish? Oh, I wouldn't mind one. And I started giving it away on the way home. I had a, a scooter and I could put a fish box in the back of it and go around the houses or whatever. And it just started from that. And people wanted fish all the time. And I, I could sell everything that I could catch, but I couldn't catch enough. So sometimes I would stop if I saw a trawler in the minch I would stop fishing, tie my lines onto a buoy, and then steam out and try and stop the, the trawler and get some fish off him. And sometimes that worked, but other times the boat just went straight past me as if he hadn't seen me, because he was on automatic pilot, I suppose. Other times they did stop and wondered if I was in trouble. No, I wasn't. And they put a chute over the side of the boat and fish just came tumbling down the chute. I had so much fish that I, I had to start salting it um, when I got home. And it was a big job getting it home. We had built a wee shed to be working in because the first winter was pretty awful. Getting fish in an open boat isn't any fun. So I needed to be able to bring the fish home and work in, in a building.
אני אבוא אל מין דנצוק וניש מגי ון ראום, כופו אני עניין שיטה, אסקיב תהיר נגאו, לפקלון תשר כנגס רוטן אבקאום, כמביניק פלונדודם, סקנחון אגדן דראום. תקיעת אין גלה מקש תקרא מבקשן נמגורן, אתה לא לוח נמת גל, אשק שלוש מורן. The Guernsey boats are to be found throughout years to have a sky and even some on the Mori Firth. Over 150 years, they must have been approximately 1,000 boats built by the Stuart family. If you didn't have a Guernsey boat, you didn't have a boat. The Stuart boats were fast, strong, light and seaworthy. To get to the fishing, a boat had to be fast and small enough to get through all the islands separating Uist. The Grimsey boat is a middle-sized, open, wooden, usually large and oak boat. The larger boats, 18 to 28 feet long, were called double-enders. When they reached the fishing grounds at the Monarchs, one mast we put ashore for the week. The main mast we put back for the race home, full of lobsters. They would stop at Callan for a cup of tea and go on to Loch Maddy, unload and row back to Calling all in one day, a distance of more than 25 miles. They, they are, are so well designed that they, they were never broken in sea. When people moved to Grimsey, mostly from the west side of the island, at the time they were being moved off the, off the land, and they had to start doing something different, so they started fishing. And when they started fishing, they needed boats being built. And there was no wood here to build boats, so the wood, first of all, was coming from sky. And they started building small boats then and, and carried on. And as things improved and it got better, they began to make a living at it and to do quite well at it in some cases. So it's been going on since then. Boats built in Grimsey had to be very light because people would lift them on their sides and had to sometimes push them down the shore and haul them back up. And they were made for sails initially, so they had to be quite lightly built. And as engines came in, uh, they had to be adapted for engines, so they were made stronger and heavier and larger. And then they couldn't be hauled up and they would be left in moorings or something like that. And uh, so they, the sails gradually, first for a while they were being built for sail and for engines. But as engines became more reliable, the sails dropped out and they were just built for engines. Then they were made wider and stronger and people didn't have to pull them up the shore. Hukath, Pachat Huskis on the Grimmesai, on the Nuisha Tour, on the Nuikiak, Och Gerichet. Agus bai siol oog fo Grimmesai yn ŵl go hausgyd hyn le bioog agus son yn leitaus ym mwyaf sian agus bai meilig yn y dol yn ŵl go hausgyd bai ffiwyn i'r ffwyrch o'n yn hausgyd yn ŵr sian. Y stiwyd sian ddannig yr gyol yn ŵl yn ŵl yn ŵl yn ŵl Pak ett hus hus det var alla nu som kutjer. Jag är så jag och Ellen Markaskal för jag har nu klockat dem att jag. Jag är så Ellen Morrison jag är så Salik Morrison att kus kurig i marken Ellen är så bag och klockat dem att jag. Jag är Ellen Fraser så jag känner jag är så det är inte så mycket bättre på jorden jag är så jag har väl och mår och klockat dem att jag. Gierskach. Ag ys stiwyd sy'n fai ag bag neu unig yn hawl gael hi'r feic yn y loch nymatig sy'n plio yn y sy'n. Ag ys sy'n yn dawn mwy hwyd cymryd eftir i ŵys y tŵr yn gael y sy'n y chynnych ar gach gael. Hup mi mol dam schai cil min draad Hup mi mol dam gan grwgach Hook me mola, hook me mogra, gano yes alyukuachan. 
Anuajahanik fista meunsi gal anul katu asklu es mi vasana torst moal ganoyes aljeku ahan anuajahai shin suasit port. Se hai tarapanu skle a torstjar magi an hanal kumbalen e yahuanu va u utram etendral es hel shinau en khuilat. Gol shin drama snakul vodog torstjar strån gan tualat. Fada har oj ali, fida fada har awila fida fada. Yaw mi nul yn tus y fai Cwyd mi ffaldor o syfiarla Rigyr i legrwam syialig Ffyrdwch anian sbig mos beisydd Fydd a ffaddo o'r o'i ali Fydd a Fana iawn yn dlws y farill Sein le garon smig a nisdioch Sawn yn sien o hw 